You might have heard the news that there's a new WordPress update that's going to hit your website this week. You might have already received a plugin update on your website in preparation for it. So it, it's compatible with this new version of WordPress. Or maybe you read a blog post or saw a video or heard somewhere that about this update that's coming out. Uh, here's a list right here of the features that are in this new release. And there's a lot of promising features in here, but aside from one or two of them, it's really pretty much a dead on arrival release. There's potential, but you're not going to really benefit from this potential because some of the problems with WordPress right now, let's go over the features first, and then I'll explain why this is kind of all dead on arrival. Now, if you don't know how to test the new version of, of WordPress before it gets released, it's uh, super easy. So you can open up a new browser tab, uh, a tab in your web browser and go to try.new. Just enter that into the web browser URL. And when you do that, it's going to start making a brand new site for you to test things on. And you can just forget about the site. It'll just completely uh, go away later. Uh, and then you want to add a plugin. And this plugin is the WordPress beta tester plugin. So go to plugins, add new and type in beta tester. And here it is right here. It's the WordPress beta tester plugin. All you need to do is click on this install now button right here. And then after installs, of course, just go ahead and click on the activate button. Now, what I like to do is uh, then click on the settings option right here. And there's some options here. What you would want to do is choose this option here that says bleeding edge. And then right here, you can choose the beta and the release candidates only. That's typically what I choose. Then click on save changes. And then when you go to dashboard and click on updates, you'll see right here, it says update to version in this case, 6.6. .6. And when you click on that, it's just going to go ahead and add the latest release version beta or a release candidate. And this is how you're able to test anything that is on the verge of coming out before it comes out. And that site you quickly made on zip WP when you entered try.new that site will self-destruct after four hours and you don't even have to worry about it. It's wonderful for testing, doesn't require registration or anything like that. So let's first take a look at some of these features. I have a list right here. The first one is there's some visual changes with the top area in the side panel. Let me show you that. So now when you go to create a page or go inside of a post or a custom post type, you'll see up here, there's this new bar that appears that used to just be white space all the way across. Now this is probably uh, going to cause some problems for some users because this area right here is commonly used by plugins to add a button to go into their interface or do some kind of thing with that plugin. And sometimes you might have two or three of those. And as you can see, even on my web browser here, there's not going to be enough space for that. So some people are going to have some weird things happen for sure. Now, this actually doesn't really serve much of a purpose. If you click on it, it just pulls up the, I think it's called the command bar or so. I forget what they called this thing. Uh, I don't use it. I never used it. You could pull it up before by hitting uh, command K and um I'm not in the habit of using this. I'm sure a lot of people aren't in the habit of using this. I really wish they would have taken this title area here and moved it up there for editing to reclaim all of this space for the page editing experience, but they didn't do that. Uh, and that's fine. I wouldn't be surprised if they do that in the future though. Uh, you know, this is funny. This actually reminds me this kind of the way this looks of a Safari web browser on your mobile phone. Uh, so, or your iPhone, if you have one. So this is uh, the first thing that's changing in here. And the second thing is over here, this totally looks different. So it's a total change in the design, change in the order of things. This is entirely different. So if you go and compare it to 
what's on your site right now, you're going to see it looks totally different. Uh, it's it's not like going to confuse anyone. It's just you, you, it just looks different. You interact different. So for the status, I go in here and I get this pop out for pretty much everything. The publish date, uh, the permalink right here, it's how you now get into things. Now, what will be interesting though, is plugins that would put stuff underneath it. Uh, so this is how it looks clean. Uh, so we'll see how that looks with plugins underneath it. Now, the next one is style variations. This is going to be very hard to show you because I don't have a theme on the site that I can use the style variations. You can see right here, styles for group blocks. So basically it's sections on your site that you can choose, change the style just for that section. If you have defined alternative styles on your site. Uh, so it's pretty interesting. I don't, I don't really see myself uh, using that much. Now the next one is negative margins. It might seem like a basic thing. This would be for container elements on your page. You can add a negative margin and this is commonly used when you want to have overlapping uh, elements on your site. So uh, the way this would work is let me toss down a, a pattern. There's some patterns here. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, toss this down. That's fine. And then let's go ahead and expand it out uh, just like this. Perfect. So when you are clicked into a container, so I'm in this group container right here, and then you pull up the settings for it. If you go over here to the style options, there's the dimensions for margin right here. Um, and you you get this like slider thing, right? And it's going to do the top and bottom, uh, to add margin, but it doesn't go negative. However, you can click on this and you can now enter a negative value. So say I put negative, uh, 100 and you see how it totally changed the, the way that it looked. Oh, and look at this. I got myself an overlapping button, uh, right there. Now this is kind of like a basic. Well, now you need a Z index to say this one goes on top of this one, but you get the point. You can now have uh, negative margins. You'll, you'll now be able to add negative margins if you're using these components to build your layouts. The next one is pattern management for everyone. And so the interface for managing patterns is going to be added to every single theme. So you don't need a special full site editing block based theme for that, which let's face it, barely anyone actually uses those kinds of themes. So let's go here. Uh, I'll go ahead and just publish this and I'll change the theme to show you what, what you're guaranteed to see. Cause you're probably using a normal theme. Uh, okay. So I'm going to go and switch the theme to the Astro theme, which is what is referred to as a classic theme. And you can see uh, right here, there's a new option that says patterns. And this is how you're going to manage patterns that you save. So when I click right here, uh, I don't, th this theme doesn't ship with patterns. Most classic themes are not going to ship with any patterns. Uh, but if you save some patterns, uh, you'll be able to manage them right here. So it's nice to see this come to everyone uh, that is using WordPress. Next, uh, very promising is pattern overrides. And this is sort of like components. Now I made a video on this a few months ago. I'll have one of those little things come up here on the right side. Uh, and I'll also uh, put that uh, in the video description. You should definitely check that out uh, about components. Uh, this is really cool. So, uh, and then it has a lot of promise. So if I go here, uh, let's see if this was that page I just created. I don't know. Uh, all right. So I can uh, go ahead and expand this out and I've clicked on this container right here. You can see it highlighted in blue. I'll click the three dots and I'm going to choose this option here that says create a pattern. Uh, so I'll give the pat. Oh, I know why it looks a little different. It's because I changed the theme and I didn't change it back, but that's good because everything's going to be able to uh, save patterns and manage patterns in that interface I just showed you. So I'll go ahead and give this a name. So I've given it the name uh, DOA. I created a new category called blog and I have this option called synced on, and then I'll save it like that. So now there's this uh, new 
thing where if I want to use this on other areas of my website and keep kind of the structure of it, but maybe just make the text editable or the button editable or the image editable, but keep the kind of same design and style, I can do what's called an override. So if I click on uh, edit original, I click on this image, then I click um, uh, expand right here where it says advanced and then scroll down. There's this option right here that says enable overrides. You can see it right here, overrides, enable overrides, and I can just go like that. Then I have to kind of name what this is. It's just an image, so I would just name it image. Then I'll click on save, and now I've created a uh, pattern. Well, let me go ahead and save this all out like that, and then I can click back, and now I've made an override for this. Uh, so I can reuse this throughout my website, and just all I'd have able, the ability to change is that image. So uh, see, I can click on it and I can just replace it. But I, when I click into the text, I can't change that. So uh, there's a lot to learn about this new concept of pattern overrides. Uh, and then if I go back into that patterns option for managing the patterns, now you're gonna see that pattern that I just created. And that's where this ties in to manage your patterns. Next, we have a enhancements to the grid block. This is actually kind of cool and has a lot of promise. So you can use CSS grid in the grid block to make beautiful grids of content. Uh, now, I made a video actually on this as well a couple months ago, a better solution on creating grids, but now there's gonna be a native option. So let me just show you what that's like. So over here on the left, you can see I'm using the grid block for this bit of con uh, content right here. And then over here, when I've clicked on it, you can see how it's configured, grid, and then you get these four options and I chose the option there on the right and it kind of creates this grid. You can control it somewhat. Um, and then what's really cool is when I uh, click on it, you can see there's these different handlebars, whatever you'd wanna call them. So if I wanted to make this wider, and manipulate the grid, I would click on it and then I can literally drag and drop it and change the size visually like this. It's actually uh, pretty cool um, and it makes it a little bit easier to make a grid how you want it on a desktop. Now, I'm not going deep into this. I have a deep video that I'll link in the video description on CSS Grid and how you can create amazing, or as I like to call them, impossible layouts using it. And then we have Roboc Auto Updates. This perhaps is the most useful to everyone. So when you have your site, let me go to it. I'm gonna to go to the list of all the plugins. So here's a list of all the plugins on this site. As you know, on the right, there's this option here to automatically update a plugin. And if I click on any of these options for that plugin like this, now auto updates are enabled. But what if with this, the plugin has a bad update that it may not be a problem with the, the plugin, but maybe there's an incompatibility with something else that's already running on my site and the site crashes. Well, what will happen is WordPress can detect the site crash and now it can also roll back that auto update in the case of a crash so your site is ends up being fine. Now, there's a lot of debate whether you should have this enabled or not. I I don't know uh, how I feel. If you don't log into your website often, maybe it's a good idea, but sometimes you really don't wanna run an update right when the update comes out in case there's a problem. Let someone else experience the problem, report the problem, and then the plugin developer can fix the problem without you having to lose any of your hair. You can tell I've had a lot of issues with that. But this is something that I think is gonna end up being uh, very helpful for people. So those are all nice things that are coming, but it's completely dead on arrival for probably 99.9% .9 of WordPress users. And here's why. So first of all, most of these features require a full site editing theme, a block based theme. And there's still a lot of confusion around what that is. A lot of people get confused uh, what a block based theme is. 
uh, but just know they are not popular at all and very few people use them. Uh, aside from the outliers, uh, the core WordPress theme that sh gets auto-installed, you probably only have maybe 200,000 websites or less using a block-based theme and they've been out for about two years now. So they're not popular at all. So now that we're looking at this list, let's look at which of the features right here actually require a block-based theme, a full site editing theme, and you're not really gonna get it. So out of this list right here, it's gonna be the styles for group blocks. You have to use one of those block-based themes. Um, right here, the quick previews for pages, same. Color palettes and font sets, this as well is going to require a block-based theme. So that knocks out like half of this. The second reason is that the block editor itself is really good in my opinion, but the blocks, the core blocks, the ones that come to every WordPress site, the ones that a lot of this work is going into, those are really bad and most people probably shouldn't be using them. In my view, it's fundamentally flawed and it requires the use of a third party plugin. And this question comes up a lot. Well, uh, can I just use what WordPress provides? And the answer is most likely no, you can't because it's fundamentally flawed. So the idea behind the core blocks is called intrinsic design. Intrinsic design means that the user and I'm going to probably screw up its meaning, but the idea is going to not be screwed up. And so pretty much the idea behind intrinsic design is that the user that or you, the person creating the website, uh, shouldn't have to put all this specificity and effort into deciding and, and controlling how the website will look on multiple device sizes. Just think a mobile device. So because you shouldn't have to worry about that, we're not going to give you the options at all to control at all how this looks on a mobile device, which to me is a really nice idea. But you can see right here, I think it's not practical at all. The majority of the visitors to your website are visiting your website on a mobile device and to not give you the controls to determine how it's gonna look and function on that mobile design, device is, is not practical at all. I have stronger words I could say, but I'm just, you know, be nice about it. So that means no mobile controls when most of the traffic comes from a, a mobile device, yet the number one page building solution on the internet offers no page builder controls for mobile device. To me, that is a problem. So right here, pattern and pattern overrides. Pattern overrides only work right now in a real basic way with core blocks. Core blocks don't have mobile controls. That's a problem. Negative margins. Negative margins is probably a recipe for disaster to use them and not be able to control it on a mobile device. I think it's bad. And then we look at the new grid block, which is pretty cool. I gotta say, it's really cool having those handlebars to control the width and the height of uh, the, uh, the grid items, but not allowing you to determine the order of those grid items on a mobile device it's a disaster. It is a disaster. It's completely unusable in my book, which is unfortunate because it's actually really cool. It's it's a, a really nice, but in my view, having mobile control for CSS Grid is absolutely essential to really get the most out of a, a grid that you might want to add to your website, where grid items are different widths and heights and different orders even, and you need to control those widths and heights and orders on every device that someone would be viewing the website on and viewing that grid on. And just in general, it's important to have mobile options, right? There's times you might want a different alignment on a mobile device, 
definitely with every bit of spacing, you're going to probably want to have control over that spacing on a mobile device because you have less space to work with. And there's also many times you need to control the ordering of layout elements on a mobile device. Sometimes you have to reverse it when you have these alternating sections. And then there's the case when you have a grid on your site and maybe it's a grid of products or maybe it's a grid of blog posts, just some form of a grid on your site and you want to control how many grid items are in a row on the mobile device. It'll always default to one, but what if you want two? This comes up a lot, actually. Um, I make a product called SureCart and we have an e-commerce grid and we get the request, hey, I want two items on a mobile device in, the, in a row in a grid. So this brings me back to my point that intrinsic design is not practical. If you maybe have a, a simple website for yourself, it's actually, I think, very cool. But most of us absolutely need to be able to control every single pixel on every device type, especially when most people are doing everything on a mobile device, interacting with your website, mostly on a mobile device. Just look at the analytics of your site and you can see how many people are interacting on your site with a mobile device. Now, if you followed this channel for any period of time, you know that I've always been super positive, optimistic, uh, and pro block editor. I was one of the first people to switch to it when, um, uh, from Elementor, uh, and I had a whole story reason why I did that way, way back in 2019, leaving Elementor and page building tools to go for the block editor. And, uh, I still think it's the right thing, but, uh, I, I just can't figure out why the world's biggest website building platform does not have any mobile control options at all for what it's building. And although I think intrinsic design is a great ideal, it's very idealistic in, in theory, it's great, but in practice, I just don't think it's practical at all. And I wish that, mobile controls and mobile control itself would just be added. And I think a lot of people that want to use WordPress for clients projects would actually be able to do those client projects if they had this control and uh, be, be able to build what they want to build. And unfortunately, until they do that, these WordPress updates are dead on arrival.